All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, that were well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. All right, this is really just a video to land back on um, what the elder apostle Rakah was saying. He was talking about, you know, throwing up curses, man. Okay. And um, he was saying, you know, we should end the video off with, with curses. And, you know, Lord willing, you know, that's something I can remember to do. Okay, because the curses is just important as the blessings, if you will, man. You know, we we play, we pray for the elect, we bless the elect, and then we curse the wicked, man. The scriptures say, um, the Most High hateth all abomination, and they that fear the Lord love it not, man. Okay, do you think the Most High is not cursing abominable things? All right, you best believe he is, man. Okay, and throwing up curses is biblical. So let's go ahead. And just get into it, Lord willing, this video was edifying. Okay. Deuteronomy 27, starting at verse 11. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand up upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when ye are come over Jordan, Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. And these shall stand up upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, Asher, and Zebulon, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord Yahweh, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall, say, shall answer and say, Amun. All right, that's the first curse. Cursed be he that set his light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amun. Right, and that's really going into lightly esteeming your parents, you know, disregarding your parents. Okay, we are to respect and deeply uh, reverence our parents. Now, do we reverence our parents over Yahweh Bashim al Shai? Hell to the no, you know? But if your parents are telling you to do something that's not going off, then do it, man, okay? That's that's a commandment of the Lord, okay? Verse 17, it says, Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amun. That's right. And that's and that's another reason why Esau is cursed, man. Okay? It says, Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amun. Right. And you niggas who are making the blind wander out of the way in a spiritual sense as well, you guys are definitely cursed, man. Okay? It says, Cursed be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger and fatherless and widow, and, and all the people shall say, Amun. Verse 20, Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovereth his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amun. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amun. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amun. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, Amun. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amun. Verse 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amun. That's right. That's for you cherry pickers, man, who want to cherry pick the scriptures. All right? Curse, cursings unto you if you want to not conform to all the scriptures of this, uh, 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 of this book, man. This law. All right? Because the whole Bible represents the law as the whole, man. Okay? Let me get this real quick. Proving that cursings is biblical. Okay? Galatians 1 and 6. Uh, Galatians 1 and 8. Slakia. It says, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Okay? Right, man. You know? And that's a cut to you Book of Mormon believers and you Islam believers, man. You know? Because they believe that they got their doctrine from an angel of the Lord. You know? Hey, let them be accursed. You know what I'm saying? Let them be accursed, man. Okay? That was the Apostle Paul. For you Christians who love to run to the Apostle Paul, man. You know? 1 Corinthians 16... In verse 22, it says, if, if any man love not the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, let him be anathema, maranatha. 
Okay, let's go into the Greek of what that means. Okay. First Corinthians sixteen twenty two. All right. Let's go into the Greek word for that. Anathema. Okay. <laughs> Apostle Paul put a double curse on your ass. It says, a religious ban or concretely excommunicated, accused, anathema, curse, great, okay, bind under a great curse, all right, that's the point, a great curse, it says, to a thing set up or laid by in order to be kept, specifically an offer resulting from a vow, which after being consecrated to a power was hung upon the walls or columns of a temple, or put in some other concupiscent place, a thing devoted to the Most High without hope of being redeemed, and if an animal to be slain, therefore a person or a thing doomed to destruction, a curse, a man a curse, devoted to the di 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 direst of woes, right, and woes means destruction, man, okay, so, and a curse, a curse is a vow, you know, when you go into the word curse, it is a vow, you know, so, but it's a vow to your, uh, uh, to your ill doing, okay, now let's go into the word Maranatha, right? Maranatha, it says an exclamation of approaching divine judgment. So Apostle Paul, he's basically throwing up a double curse on you if you don't love the Lord, man. And what's a part of loving the Lord? Keeping the commandments and feeding his sheep. Okay. Our Lord cometh or will come. All right, so that's a point on that right there. You know, a curse, man. All right, judgment. All right. Let's get another scripture from our beloved brother, Apostle Paul. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 20. It says, Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So, Paul said he delivered them unto Satan, man. What does that mean? He cursed them, man. He cursed them, okay? That's what he did. He cursed them. He threw a curse on them, man, all right? Because they were being wicked, okay? And many righteous men have cursed wicked people, okay? Facts. It's facts, man. Yahweh Shai cursed uh, wicked people, you know? He cursed a tree for not uh, bearing fruit. Okay, and guess what? And looking at it in a spiritual sense, for all you men who are dry trees who don't bear any fruits, guess what? You are cursed of the Lord. And guess what? You will be hewn down and cast into the fire, man. All right? For all you false prophets. Let me go ahead and get a scripture from King David. All right? A righteous man, a well-known righteous man cursing people. Psalms 35 and 3. It says, Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. <laughs> hey, man, that sounds like a curse to me. Verse 6, let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord Yahweh persecute them, right? For, verse 7, for without cause they have hid, slack it, have they hid from me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged from my soul. It's verse 8, it says, let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. That's right, man. You know what the scriptures say? He that uh, rolls a stone shall shall be rolled upon it. it roughly paraphrasing, let me get this scripture. Basically saying you set up a trap for someone to fall, and it's gonna fall upon you. You know. Let me see if I I think that's in Proverbs. Here we go. Proverbs 26 and 27. It says, it's a lot. This is a precept right here. Proverbs 26 and 27, whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. That's right, you know? So don't be trying to set up, don't be trying to devise wicked plots, because that same wicked plot will come back on you, man. You know, like they say in the world, what goes around comes around, or they call it karma, but really it's judgment, all right? It's judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay? Let me get this real quick. 2 Kings 2 and verse 23. 
And he went up from thence unto Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. So they were basically, these little jits were cracking on Elisha, man, okay? You know, calling him a bald head, all right? And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord Yahweh. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them, okay? So he looked back on the children and he threw up a curse on their ass, man. And guess what? The Lord avenged him, man, okay? Matter of fact, let me get this scripture real quick. All right. Poor man cry. Prayer. Let me get that scripture. I believe it's in Sirach. Here we go. Um, uh, Ecclesiastes 21 and 5. It says, A prayer out of a poor man's mouth reaches to the ears of the Most High, and his judgment cometh speedily. That's right. And through the Spirit, we are that poor man. You know? The Most High say he chose the poor of this world, but rich in faith. That's in James. Okay? The book of James. You know? But let me get another one real quick. Okay? So it's it's kind of like the same thing. But let me find it, man. Oh, here we go. Ecclesiasticus and um, verse 4, starting at verse 4, it says, Reject not the supplication of the afflicted, neither turn away the face from a poor man. Turn not away thine eye from the needy, and give him none occasion to curse thee. For if he curse thee, in the bitterness of his soul, his prayer shall be heard of him that made him. There we go. That's another scripture about curses, man. Okay? And that was a spirit, because I didn't even have that written down. You know? So there you go, man. All right, curses are biblical, okay? Psalms, I'm going to go ahead and close out on this, Lord willing. All right, Psalms 109. And um, I'll start at verse 1, okay? Psalms 109 and 1. To the chief musician, the psalm of David, hold not thy peace, O the most high of my praise, okay? O, o power of my praise. For my mouth... For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compass me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are adversaries. But I give, un I give myself unto, my pr unto prayer. Okay? Read that again. It says, for my love, they are my adversaries. But I give myself unto prayer. That's right, man. And who is our love? Our love is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, and how do we show that we love Yahweh Bashem Yahshai? By way of taking heed unto his laws, such as the commandments, you know, into his word. Okay, it says, verse 5, and they, that, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Right, and that's exactly how these wicked ass Jakes be doing too. Because this is also going into Esau, but it's also going into really anyone coming in a wicked spirit. Okay. You know, we, we show Jake love by rebuking them, and they entreat us evil, man, okay? You know, Paul, Apostle Paul said we are made as the filth of the world, <laughs> you know? But, hey, we're glad we are because we know we're doing something right, all right? So call like him, like you, how about shooting out shot? But here we go. Uh, King David is cursing them, man. So curses are biblical. It says, set thou a wicked man over him. And let Satan stand at his right hand. Okay? <laughs> it says, when he shall be judged, let him be condemned. And let his prayer become sin. Okay? Damn. You know? Let his days be few and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. And that's really going into the nation of Edom, man. Okay? But, you know, you wicked ass niggas, you're going to get judged too, man. We throw up curses on you wicked niggas too, man. Best believe that. It says... Let the iniquity of his father 
be remembered with the Lord Yahweh and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Okay, it says, let them be before the Lord Yahweh continually that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Because he hath remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with his gar like with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. Let him be unto him as the garment which covereth him. Whoo! So basically saying, let him be cursed. Okay? It says, for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually, let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord Yahweh and of them that speak evil against my soul. Okay? But do thou for me, O the Most High, the Lord, for my name's sake, because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. And did we not read earlier about the prayer of a poor man? If he curses you in the bitterness of his soul, his prayer will be answered, man. So guess what, man? The Lord is going to curse you wicked adversaries, man, of the men of the Lord, okay? Because we are coming in the same spirit of King David. The elect are known as the house of David. All right, and Lord willing, we be a part of that house, man. Okay? So that's really the point on that right there. Curses are biblical, all right? And this ain't nothing new, man. All right? And I believe there was a scripture when uh, Moses cursed Korah, you know, when they were bucking up against him. Okay? Hold on. Let me see if I can find that scripture real quick. The scripture, the spirit just hit me on that one. See if I can find that scripture. I believe it's in Numbers. Okay. Here we go. Number 16. Let me see. But yeah, man. All right. And Moses was a man of the Lord. Okay. Ooh, oh, man. All right. Um, it's a lot. Let me find that scripture. Okay. Um, Here we go. Numbers 16 and 15. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Yahweh, respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them. Neither have I hurt. Neither have I hurt one of them. So the Lord is saying, don't respect their offering, man. You know, I mean, Moses was saying that. OK, so Moses was basically throwing up a curse on them. And if you further read down, the Lord uh, destroyed Korah and his family. OK, and everyone that was coming in that same wicked spirit as him. You know, so that's the point on that right there. I wanted to get that real quick. You know, but, but you brothers could read the whole chapter. I would advise you to read the whole chapter. But with that, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakakwadash, that will honor to the elders and apostles of the great millstone that root well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom, Akim. Wa, Mawath, Lababa, Wa, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Shalak, Rayam, Wa, Mashapayim, La, all you wicked people out there, man. Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, the water to Abamun. Shalom, Akim.